to a mem- memorable and had an impact like, um, you know, uh, a Garvey or right. uh, uh, right. Malcolm X, right. you know, or, or, you know, we, or uh, Harriet Tubman, you know, there's many people to, 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 to go down the list, of, you know, Fred Hampton, there's so many people to go down the list, but, you know, they wanted to keep a lot of things concealed. They wanted to, you know, and even racism, where it stands out here right now, it's still covert. You know, it's been covert for the probably past 25 years. It's been covert. Mm-hmm. But, you know, before that, you know, it was more in your face. Now, I'm not saying that racism still doesn't play play out out here, but the problem is, there's so much interracial, um, there's so much integration, there's so much interracial, interracial connection out here. So everybody has, most people, a lot, most people I have interracial posse. That's what I call them. So they have interracial posse and stuff like that. But because of the culture out here and because it, because, because of it being covert, you know, and the way um, the laws are out, you know, it's kind of made people comfortable. Right. It's made people comfortable and it makes people see no color, you know, or it's made people be not, it, it, it's made people not be, um, not challenge the narrative, strongly challenge. Now, there is a couple of people that do that out here. But it's a very few. So if you're talking about, you know, having how many, you know, um, millions of people, um, black indigenous people out here, there's only one or two people doing that, you know, then there's an issue. Right. There's an issue. You understand what I'm saying? Because people feel once you kind of express that, 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 um, code of conduct of what being pro-black is people want to kind of um, they want to um, what's the word I'm looking for I think they they, they want to like um, they want to make it all pretty and stuff like that they don't want to be too hardcore because they may feel oh, it's going to cut their check off you know it's going to it's going to their white next their white next door neighbor might not like them no more right. or or it's 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 gonna you know um, make them see look like they're 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 radical or not get paid by the independent project by um, you know you know the, 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 these white people. But for me, the way I look at things is there's nothing better than being yourself rather than being a substitute. You know. There's nothing, there's nothing better than being being yourself, rather than being a carbon copy. Yeah, you know, because if you can't, if you if you're a carbon copy, you know, um, then we're gonna have, we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna be creating um, um, another generation of zombies. We're gonna be creating another generation of zombies. You know, there needs to be people which stand up, you know, stand up, you know, and are proud, you know, and it's not just by using a social media profile to display that, it's just a 24, and that's one thing I like, right. we've come, come into the state, right. you know, obviously in Africa it's different because obviously the, the majority of people are out there, you know, they're, they're the same skin, they're just the same skin folks. Like obviously in the States, it's like when I met all of these um, people who are part of the, um, um, uh, you know, pro-black organizations and so forth, pan-African organizations. That was how they were twenty-four-seven. Right. You know, right. it was like twenty-four-seven, and the, and and they had that support network mm-hmm. where they functioned in a way where they can be themselves. You know, so um, because of the different, the, the the demographic kind of dynamic of things out here, you know, um, things 
You know, it's 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 it's, it's not an easy thing, but what but what we should be doing right now is we should be creating more. We should be building more bridges with different brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Well, you know, because there's always we don't now. We pretty much um, are going to be obsolete. You know, um, back in the day, the difference was that we were actually supporting each other. So what I stood for, you know, wasn't just me speaking. I was speaking for a, a, a culture. I was speaking for a community. You know, that felt the same way. Whereas though. Um, if I was shutting something down, we all was shutting it down. Nowadays, if I say shut it down, you know, you got, you got some people who are just, you know, breaking that line. It's like they're crossing the picket line. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, they don't, you don't have that support. And I think time has done that. You know, the, um, the, the, with, with the evolution of the, uh, you know, freedom of the, uh, of the mind has allowed us to become lazy in regards to you know having um, absolutely you know having having a good moral compass to stand by live for and by each other in that regards man you know um which is a dangerous weapon it's more powerful than any any weapon that's <clears throat> ever been used against us you know because it's been handed to us it's like handing a uh, people um you know uh, um something even more powerful than a gun you know and and allow them to go ahead and or empower them to use it against each other and not support when you don't, when we don't support each other, that's worse than shooting each other with guns, man. You know, because it's generation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the key thing you, you, you've um, touched on when you say it's generational and I was, you know, thinking about that today in regards of it being generational. Cause I was going to put up a post and I was thinking that sometimes, I'll, you know, cause I know my post always creates dialogue. It always creates, controversy and so forth and for me um you know of with certain people right now who are in let's say who are in their 16 upwards or something because they've gone through uh because they've lived to see what was going on with with racism and because of the mentality and because they felt their backs were against the wall, you know, they took off, they, it was all affirmative action, you know. Right. There weren't no justification to compromise their integrity. There wasn't no justification to compromise their integrity for what they stand for. Exactly. You know. But for obviously people who are coming up now in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, is a bit different. It's different because they've installed a different mindset because society has changed. Some of the rules have changed. Mm -hmm. And also the media has changed as well. You know, the media has birthed a new... Um, the, the, the media has birthed a puppet. It's birthed that puppet yep. who is someone that, and I'm going to use this word token, if you were to call it token, token Negro, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> That's right. That person where they're, 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 they're comfortable with. Right. which fits into their agenda. Right. And a lot of us, even some of us who call ourselves pro-black or whatever, a lot of us are even steering in that direction, but we don't see it. Mm. You know, I'm not saying, you know, like at the end of the day, you can praise a past daddy because of his achievements or whatever. Sorry, if you call him past daddy, <laughs> well, you know, because of his, but at the end of the day, we spend more time praising these type of people. Right, right. Then praising a Dr. Amos Wilson or right. Kelly Muhammad or exactly. you, you understand what? And why is it all the time that celebrities seem to get your recognition? Hmm. Then 
these people who stood for you? Why do they get so much focus? You know, because it's not like they're giving um, people who were um, seen or ca- categorized as celebrities who are more like activists. Right. You know, so that, you know, it, you know, because they didn't give Chuck B that, that type of recognition. They would have given like a, a puff daddy or a basketball player or whatever it is, you know, because obviously they're looking at, okay, um, they might have supplied them with, because a lot of people are seeing it on the, on, on, on the, the surface of, okay, they've been, they've set up foundations to, 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 so people can, so our people can move out of a, a, a poverty state of mind. Um, but they've done it strategically because it, 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 they didn't pick everybody. They, they picked who can benefit their agenda. Right, exactly. They pick, they, they were specific on who they can, you know, them benefit in their ag- agenda. You understand what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, um, it's not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing because obviously it's a good thing to, you know, uh, supply your, you know, um, to provide your people with opportunity. But let's try to do that when we're not under the, we're not under the influence of the slave master. Let's do this. Uh, let's do that where we can accumulate enough money so we can do things independently. So there's no slave master in the background which are pushing the button. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that, yeah. man. You know, I mean, you you you, you hit it one hundred on the on the nail, man. Because um, it just reminds me. Everything you're saying reminds me of something so simple as respecting your mother and your father, respecting your elders. Um, the, the, the agenda from uh, the internet, the power the internet has given, um, you know, the, the, the youth, it automatically gives them a, a, a way to rebel. Um, back in the day, any, any level of rebellion that we had when we were youth, uh, when we were young, we, had, we, we always, at the end of the day, we always had to come home and still deal with mom and dad. Nowadays, you could just be, you know, on your phone talking to mom and dad, you know what I mean? And never, some kids never get to even see their parents, man. You know, their parents is at work or whatever or doing whatever they do. And these kids, um, these parents allow, you know, the communications, could, you know, to be on these devices. Like um, I've been in households where I've seen children communicate and adults communicate with their children on the phones opposed to talking to each other and they right there in the same household in the same room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and so what that that kind of effect what it has is that, you know, um it 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 dehumanizes, you know, um our our um ability to communicate with each other. And if we can't if you if a child is not having proper communication within the home, it's gonna be absolutely difficult. To, to, to expect these children to conduct themselves outside of the home. Because like I said back in the day, we always, no matter what we did, we, you know, for the most part, we always still had to come home and deal with mom and dad or or even deal with, you know, the neighbors. You know, when I was when I was young, well, you know, mom and dad wasn't the only problem. You know what I'm saying? that You know, you had to make it home. And, and, and before you got home, you had to go through the neighborhood. And the neighborhood, you know, there was other mothers out there that was getting at you, you know what I'm saying? So you know yeah. it was that kind of bond. Oh, you that's 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 gone. You don't. There is no, you know, no um, you know, uh, black community in regards to that. There's no tribal, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, love but, anymore. And I, and I, and I feel there's a, there's a combination of elements to that. There's different elements. There's one element is the the change of society. Um, that's one of the elements. Second element is the change of food and how we're eating. That's the ah. second element. Ah. Third element. Third element is the media. That's also another element. The media and the fourth element is um, the music, the change of music, and the 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 fifth element is. The, the disconnection from the grandparents. 
So those those are the the, the, the elements what um, have created um, a whirlpool of different um, conflicts um, internally because there was cooked meals was introduced more a few decades ago, a couple of decades ago. Cooked meals were introduced more than fast food. Mm. Now there's been so much fast food popping up. Now only that, that's why the UK and the US there's certain there's this there's, there's similarities. And the similarities are how they are creating a poverty mindset when it comes to our people mm. and imposing the gentrification, which is a which is another technical fancy term for white supremacy. So when they're implemented, when, when they're, you know, when they're imposing all of these things, you know, then there's going to be a change of Nubian. When, 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 when they're imposing these things, there's going to be a change of Nubian. So if, if you're not having the, the, the cooked meals and you're just living off the fast food, then there's going to be a change. If you're not listening to, you know, because even for the old school rap culture, you know, the old... The people who grow up, who are now in their thirties and forties, and also the people in their fifties, they um, were they basically, you know, they 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 basically grew up, um, you know, even though they 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 listen to hip hop, they still listen to the old classic music, you know, they still li- listen to the old classic music like um, you know. Your uh, the Nat King Cole, right. your your Lionel Richie, um, uh, you know Anita Baker, all of those musicians there, the Stevie Wonder's, they listen to that, so they grew up on that. In regards to music, you know, and also in regards to the society, society has changed. You know, um, society has now taken over the control of how you treat your child. You know, as well as imposing the LBGQ, right. the the LBGTQ, which you know, it which was not as prevalent as it was back back, back then. That that's a, that's that's another thing as well, and also the media. You know, now if you're going back three decades ago or whatever, or two decades ago, do you remember any shows like Empire coming on? Or well, I don't remember no Empire or Real Housewives of Atlanta. Absolutely not. So this is all a part of psychological warfare, which also is not helping our mental health condition. Because it's a psychological warfare, yeah, which is affecting our subconscious and it's programming the new token Negro of the day. Mm. And people are not seeing that. You know, people don't want to, you know, disconnect from the matrix because they still want, they want to belong to something because they want to belong to something where it feeds their ego because a lot of people want to be seen as someone significant for the sake of being, Mm. you know, for the the sake of being rather than being here for a purpose, being here for a purpose where you stand for humility you stand for humility and uh, you, you stand for humility and you also incorporate that into your values and your moral compass when you're giving service to your community right when you're giving service to your brothers and sisters when you're thinking of pan african initiatives to support your brothers and sisters so we can come out of this 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 generational curve. 